Well, I'm Annie Clark. I'm one of four coaches um, se- uh, chairing the seminar, the advanced seminar. I'm from Sydney at the University of Sydney in Australia, and my my three other co-chairs come from London and also from from Sydney. And the subject of our seminar is it's uh, reassembling the collection, and we're looking at indigenous ag- agency and the ethnographic collection. And what we're trying to do is reconfigure how we think about and interpret the role that Indigenous people have played uh, at crucial points in the formation of museum collections, but particularly looking at the early days of the formation of colonial museums around the world, um, where Indigenous people have been the silent actors in the formation of those collections, and where it's extremely difficult to extract agency and the Indigenous presence from historical records, from diaries, um, from photographs, from all those kinds of docu- the archival and historical material. So we're really trying to return to the collections and the objects and the, the physical or material properties of objects and how they're assembled, how they're put together, uh, the processes in the field, the processes by which they enter museums, the processes which they're distributed through the, through the empire, through the colony, um, between um, communities that were producing um, materials, how they then got moved on through those through those systems of trade and exchange into the major the major museums and some smaller museums as well. But we're also looking at the way in which um, museum collections are being reinterpreted, reconfigured, reclaimed, um, reimagined in the present through interactions between museum curators. Um, and music, members of the museum community and indigenous uh, people as well. So we have uh, people from all over the world, um, from museums from different locations and different field sites, um, looking at a whole range of different, different materials and different kinds of collections and how we can really find the traces and the, um, the small fragments that tell us something of what has previously been a... a a sort of untold story, if you like, about the way in which museum collections have, for, have been formed. People have tried to do this in the past. It's not, we're not the first people to try and do this, obviously, in recent times, because there's been a huge um, resurgence in the interest in museums and the, in the engagement and interactions of Indigenous communities with museums all around the world. Um, but one of the things that people have found difficult to do from both sort of historical evidence and the archival evidence, and even from the objects themselves, is really find ways of talking about um, and understanding those, those interactions, uh, uh, cycle and social relationships that cycle around um, objects and, and, and collections. So we're really trying to uh, come up with ways of, um, through, case, through very detailed case studies, of trying to understand uh, the role of Indigenous communities in um, producing um, uh, museum collections. So it's, it's, so there's a whole range of um, different things that people have looked at. So we've had scholars looking at um, collaborative uh, efforts in terms of, say, particular museum objects. There's one person looking at uh, a Maori war canoe for, in the, in the, has ended up in the Museum of Scotland um, and the curator, along with a... Um, conservator and a Maori artist who lives in London uh, who travelled up to Scotland to work on the project they've disassembled the object to try and understand its formation and then have re and through that process of uh, taking it apart both for conservation but for also for trying to understand its its um, connection um, and then the artist has uh, created a new some new materials to go with it so it's those so there's a whole range of different interactions around objects that we've been we're invest thinking and collections that we are interested in investigating.